Okay, great. Thank you very much. Please note that this meeting will be live streamed and available for public viewing on YouTube. And as part of the public participation, if you have any questions regarding items on the agenda, please submit them by email to mail at ektwp.ca. Questions received prior to the meeting will be addressed during the public question period, which is limited to 15 minutes. We begin this regular council meeting by acknowledging that we are meeting on the traditional territory of the Algonquin First People. We do so respecting both the land and the Indigenous people who continue to walk with us through this world. Uh, just uh, for the benefit of anybody who happens to be watching the live stream or the recording a little bit later on, um, I'm actually in Ottawa right now at uh, the major uh, provincial uh, conference for municipalities, uh, AMO 2022. And as it happens, the uh, land acknowledgement that we would use normally for the council chamber still applies, even though uh, I'm elsewhere. So it all worked out. So the first item of business is the adoption of the agenda. And so I'm looking for a mover and seconder for that. Uh, moved by Councillor Brayton, seconded by Councillor Eady, that the regular meeting of council agenda dated August 15th, 2022 be adopted. All those in favor? And that carries, thank you. Just a question, Mayor Burrow. Yep, by all means, go ahead, Councillor. Um, since we have uh, someone in the, in the waiting room for the communication, Hour, do you want to move them to first to the first report? Sure, I don't have a problem with that. Is that okay with everybody else, uh, Council? Seems to make sense. Okay, so we'll go ahead and uh, and move that item. Uh, I guess at six point four, we'll uh, we'll deal with that first uh, when we get to staff reports. Thanks for that uh, suggestion, Councilor Smith. Uh, so at this time, I'll ask if any member of Council has a uh, pecuniary interest with regards to any item on tonight's agenda. And if so, what is the general nature thereof? Okay, I don't see any, so we'll move on to the adoption of the minutes. We have uh, two sets of minutes uh, this evening. Looking for a mover and seconder to receive both of those. Moved by Councilor Renault, uh, seconded by Councilor Linton, that the regular meeting of council minutes dated July 11th, 2022 be adopted. And the special meeting of council minutes dated July 20th, 2022 be adopted. Uh, any comments, concerns, questions regarding either of those sets of minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor? And that carries, thank you very much. Uh, we don't have any delegations per se. Uh, we do have um, uh, Mr. Lewis, of course, uh, with regards to the next item. So we'll just move straight into uh, staff reports. Uh, so dealing with item 6.4 first, this is a report A22-77 regarding a request for concurrence. Uh, just give me a moment to, uh, to move ahead to that, uh, that resolution. Uh, here we go. So uh, the motion reads as follows. I'll come back and uh, seek a mover and seconder. <clears throat> motion is that report A-22-77 be received and that the township concurs with the telecommunication tower installation by ExploreNet Communications Inc. on 62 County Road 16, subject to the four conditions as detailed in Report A-22-77, and that this concurrence remains in effect for a maximum period of three years from the date of this resolution. The construction is not commenced within three years, and new submission and review post process is required. I'm looking for a mover and seconder for that, and then we can begin discussion if any. Moved by Councillor Linton, seconded by Councillor Smith. Uh, all right, so now I'll open up the floor for uh, for any discussion or any questions that we may have for Mr. Lewis. I'm uh, not seeing any hands at this point. Oh, uh, yes, Councillor Smith. Um, just a question, but not to Mr. Lewis. 
Uh, just for clarification for myself, I think, in regards to the three years um, of the commencement of construction, uh, has that always been our practice for three years? I know we have building permits for two years. I didn't know if this was a two or a three years. Uh, so through to our administrator clerk. To council, uh, yes, that's a standard clause that uh, has appeared in past okay. concurrences. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions or discussion? Uh, Councillor Lynn. Through you to Mr. Lewis. Um, is there any kind of a commencement date set in place that he's looking to do? Or? Uh, go ahead and uh, feel free to field any of these uh, questions as they come along, Mr. Lewis. Yes, uh, uh, thank you for uh, having me speak here. Uh, ExploreNet's looking at building the site as reasonably soon as possible. Uh, we don't have a firm date because we have to wait for all the approvals are in place, but this is the last one. So uh, it should go pretty quick. It won't be the three years. Um, you know, I would estimate that they'd start it within a couple months. Okay, very good. Thank you. Any other questions, Council? All right, I just, uh, more a curiosity on my part than anything else, as I was reading through the documentation, I noticed that the, uh, if I understood it correctly, the the ad uh, that was uh, placed as per our requirements um, was placed in the Perth uh, newspaper. And I was just, so maybe a, a suggestion uh, to our own uh, staff, if uh, if council agrees, I'm not sure how many people in, in the north end of our um, township would necessarily uh, turn to that particular publication as their go-to uh, daily source of news. I think the, um, the Smith Falls uh, recorder Sorry, Smith Falls Record News uh, or Inside Ottawa Valley, depending on uh, how you know it, uh, maybe a, a more appropriate one. So, uh, Madam Clerk, uh, would there be anything wrong with us providing a little bit of guidance to proponents uh, as to uh, typical publications that, that we would expect people to read? Uh, Mr. Mayor to Council, um, I, I apologize. I wasn't at the beginning of this. Um, this process, so I'm not exactly sure what uh, what guidance suggestions were provided um, for ExploreNet in um, advertising. Uh, I could take a look at it and find out why this one in particular was used. Um, I do know that the Church Courier does have some membership in, in the town of Smith Falls and, and lower. And that's possibly why I, I can't tell you for sure. Okay, fair enough. And, and as I say, it was just something that, that jumped out at me and I thought I would just explore it. Uh, I would hate to have somebody uh, come back to us after the fact and, you know, say that they, they knew nothing about it, uh, you know, just that they hadn't seen it in the paper and to be having that discussion then. So if you could look into it, that'd be great. Okay, so I think we're at the point where I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and call the question on the motion then. All those in Oh, sorry, uh, I see Councillor Renault. Go ahead. You're quite right on that advertising. It, it should really be in the EMC. Nobody in this area, and if it's Nublis, we're not even close to getting the courier. So it really should have been in the EMC. If you wanted people in the uh, Nublis, Jasper, Toledo area to have seen it. I suspect that most people in the area are going to be just happy to have ever increasing access to reasonable internet service. So I don't think there's going to be any objection to it, but just um, just a technicality we should keep our eyes on that's all. All righty, I'll go ahead and call the question then. All those in favor? And that's everybody that carries. Thank you very much. And so you're welcome to stay with us, Mr. Lewis, if you like, otherwise we can invite you to spend your time maybe more productively elsewhere, whatever your, uh, whatever suits you. Perfect. I appreciate your time and uh, thank you uh, and have a great night. Take care. Thanks. Bye. Okay. So getting back to our regularly scheduled program, let me just uh, arrange my windows accordingly here. Okay. So we're back to item 6.1. Uh, this is a uh, staff report regarding uh, the recreation committee. Uh, the uh, the motion here is just to receive this report, so I'm looking for a mover and seconder. I moved by Councillor Smith, uh, seconded by Councillor Edie, that report A-22-73 be received. And so with that, now I can uh, open up the floor for uh, discussion. 
Councillor Smith. Uh, thank you, Wilson. Um, I have to say it's a, it's a good report. I know uh, it was brought to uh, to the council's attention about talking about recreation committee. Um, you know, there's a few points actually that have been almost very bullet line that's uh, very appropriate. Um, I like the in number two, uh, the comments. Uh, number two, I like the uh, there's potential for recreation plan economic development into one committee. Um, number three, focusing on our hamlets and concentrating on beautification of programs. Um, number four is very similar to number three, in my opinion. Uh, number five, uh, the joint recreation, bringing representatives from various community recreation organizations. This is something that did take place back in the uh, in the eighties, um, and and actually presently our recreation coordinator does work with uh, the community recreation organizations. Um, so I do believe there's um, there's some good in this um, to create a recreation committee. Within all the comments in this report. Um, and I do believe with some of the comments as far as the uh, terms of reference go, um, I do believe that they, they should have a skill set and duty responsibility, great perspective uh, to the community, to the table. Um, they are, you know, the people in the community are the experts of what they like to see in recreation. Um, we're not always the experts around the council table. We do give our opinions and our views. Uh, and um, we do support uh, a majority of the items that are brought to our attention. So I think this report is good. I do believe there's something that we can, uh, as a council, should look at as far as recreation. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, any further discussion? <clears throat> All right, so I'll just I'll go ahead and, and share uh, my view, and then I think we have to sort of decide. You know, if if this is all we do is uh, discuss this uh, just a little bit tonight, there's really no clear direction. I, I think it would be a waste of a report. So I think um, hopefully we can we can determine what the next step is going to be. Um, I like the idea of um, uh, getting community members uh, in involved, uh, so that. That it certainly echoes some of the comments that you made, uh, Councillor Smith. Um, lots of, uh, of good options, including whether to go with a, a committee of the whole system or one that uh, includes members of the, of the public. But, but I, do, I do prefer that second option of getting the, um, the public flavor in there. Um, of all of them, the, the community development aspect, uh, where it goes beyond just recreation, but, uh, but includes the, the beautification. It's been something that's been on my mind, especially this year, that uh, you know, our, our Hamlet signs are, are not consistent. Um, some Hamlets don't even really have signs, depending on if they have a county road uh, going through them or not. They might have a little blue street sign, essentially, that announces that you've entered the, the Hamlet. I think there's some opportunities there. Um, so I think there's, a, I think there's a, a, an opening here uh, to create some community pride. Uh, through through beautification and, and recreation and that type of thing. I think that the time has come. We're starting to focus a bit more on recreation. So for what it's worth, my own personal uh, favorite that I had circled was the uh, the community development uh, approach, at least as the, as the next step. Um, so with those uh, few initial comments from Councillor Smith and, and myself, as I indicated, uh, I would hate to just see us end the discussion there and you know, because there's really no mechanism for this to, to come forward again, other than if at some future meeting, somebody gives a, a notice of motion or what have you. So um, is council prepared this evening to at least give some direction to staff as to what we want the next step to be? Uh, Councilor Renault, I see your hand there. As for the signs, the uh, Economic Development Committee is working on that and has started. Yep. So some of the signs will be changing. It's a dollar and cent thing. Uh, so we can't get too many of them done at a time. I like this idea of a recreation committee. Uh, I think it should report directly back to council, save a, a whole lot of steps if they have recommendations to council. It would make a lot of sense. And I think if we were going to do something like this, we should have it in place to start with the beginning of the next term. And that would be my recommendation that we just do something like this, have some counselors on it, have 
community people on it and have them report their recommendations directly to council. Okay, thank you. Any other uh, discussion? Councillor Eady. Uh, I would like to move to choose number four, the community development committee. I think that's gonna give an opportunity for our residents to bring their skills to the table too as well and make them feel part of the process again, which I think is very lacking at the point moment. Okay, so did I hear that, that you're moving the, to, that we go with number four? Yes. Okay, so I guess at this point, uh, we will be seeking a seconder. Uh, Councillor Renault, you're seconding that? I would second that as long as they're reporting directly to council. Okay, you all right with that, uh, Councillor Eady? Absolutely. Okay, so uh, discussion around that uh, specific motion then, if, uh, if any, any further comments? Okay, I'll go ahead and call the question then. All those in favor? And that's everybody. Okay, thank you. That's uh, that's carried. And now we have some clear direction. That's great. Okay, moving on then to item 6.2. Uh, this is with regards to future records management. Um, Madam Clerk, did you have anything you wish to add before we move ahead with this? Uh, this is um, this is not uh, my report. Uh, oh, true. It's uh, <laughs> Ms. Steinberg's account. You may wish to. Yep. I'm sorry. And that's why she would be in the chambers. And of course, she's out of she's out of view right now. And so that had momentarily slipped my mind. So I'm uh, my apologies, uh, Ms. Steinberg. Did you have anything you wish to add to your report before we discuss it? No, she doesn't at this time. <laughs> okay, fair she enough. She got so excited she couldn't speak, but she is available for any questions. <laughs> fair enough. So, so the only thing I accomplished in all that exercise was embarrassing myself. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> okay, so the uh, the motion reads that report A-22-74 be received and the council direct staff to further investigate Tom RMS compliance services subscriptions for consideration in the 2023 budget. So I'm looking for a mover and seconder for that. Move, <clears throat> excuse me, moved by Councillor Smith, seconded by Councillor Brayton. And so now, uh, discussion, if any, and we will direct any of our questions to uh, Ms. Steinberg. Uh, Councillor Eady. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> My question was, um, so once it's put into digital, we can get rid of the paper format, or are we still keeping the paper format for the certain amount of years? <laughs> Um, the goal behind Tom Rooms is to um, rely on the digital so that we do not have to keep the paper copies. Yeah, that's the goal. Yes. Yeah. So once you guys are done inputting it, then you just toss the paper. Correct. Right. Well, we eventually already hold on. Properly get rid of the paper uh, copies immediately. Awesome. That's what I wanted to do. Nice and clean. Thank you. All right, uh, Councillor Renault. Just wondering how secure or how, um, hmm, trying to think of the right word. Uh, you're not going to lose them. I mean, things backed up on whatever. Floppies are no longer, CDs are no longer. How long before the memory sticks no longer? What are you putting it on that it's not going to be a no longer thing? But you're not going to lose it. You can't lose paper unless you burn it. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so right now the township is using file folks to hold our digital documents. Top rooms would be more of a structure on how to organize um, those documents. So file hold is very secure. Secure. Um, and we're just in the process of adding things right now and seeing how that goes at the moment. Okay, uh, Councillor Lynn. Just through you to again. Um, will there be a period of time where this goes jointly before that, before it finally stops? Mm -hmm. Can I can I please ask a, for clarification? Or, or, Councillor Lynn, will it be done 
side by side until a certain time when it was closed. But, you know. As each as each uh, document is is scanned and put it into the Tom Room system properly, the paper copy will stay until it's it's gone through that process. Any further questions or discussion? <laughs> Councilor Smith. This is just a comment from from past experience. Um, I think once you do some more investigating with this uh, Tom RMS uh, compliance services, I believe it, I believe there's a seven year period where you have to keep certain documents before you shred. So mm -hmm. it, it, all I'm saying is that I don't think you can digital today and destroy it tomorrow. All I'm saying is probably investigation. Uh, Madam Clerk, did you have any comment on that? Uh, yes, um, there are such varying um, records retention dates, but there are specific permanent records such as um, council minutes for tradition. We may wish to keep the, the hard copies around, uh, but majority of documents within the municipality can be digitized and left as digitized only without having a paper copy behind. Very good. Any other questions? I guess I have one. It's not so much related to the specific uh, uh, Tom Rooms uh, initiative, but I have noticed uh, that a number of our uh, past records are uh, becoming more and more accessible uh, in our document center uh, through our website, which is great. Um, and what I've noticed is they don't appear to be uh, searchable. So I don't know whether that's an expectation that I should never have, whether these are just essentially scans of our uh, older records and we still have to read through them. Whereas our, our more recent documents that are created electronically uh, come up when you do uh, keyword searches. So I'm not sure uh, which one of our, our staff members there would be the best one to answer that question, but if you can tell me whether uh, you know one day I can expect to be able to electronically search through these older ones that are being processed, great. If I should never expect that, then I'll just stop expecting it at some point. Um, so through you, uh, Mayor Burrell, uh, a lot of our document center items are searchable. However, it does seem to grab every mention of the word that is being searched. So it's is not as user friendly um, as we would like. Uh, it may be a matter of simply creating more folders that um, somewhat removes some of the digging that a person would need to do in order to find the documents that they're interested in, in particular. Uh, but we are slowly moving into um, uh, making sure things are more accessible, uh, keeping documents within our document center for longer in case anyone needs to refer back to past. Uh, notice a public meeting, um, for instance. So with, we're moving in that direction. It's just, it's a process. Yeah, no, it's, it's good. I mean, you know, a journey of a thousand miles starts with the first step. So that's, uh, that's all good. All right, if there's no further uh, discussion then, and I don't see any hands, so I'll go ahead and call the, the question. All those in favor? And that carries, thank you. So moving on to our next item, uh, 6.3. Uh, this is a report regarding uh, joint, com joint Compliance Audit Committee. Um, Madam Administrator, I note this is your report, so I'll turn to you and ask you if there's anything you want to add before we get into this. No, sir. No, sir. Okay. Uh, so the motion uh, is as follows, that report A-22-76 be received and that staff be instructed to draft the necessary bylaw for council's consideration to appoint the members recommended by the United Counties of Leeds and Grenville to the Compliance Audit Committee for the term 2022 to 2026, once the recommendations are received. So I'm looking for a mover and seconder for that. Moved by Councillor Linton, seconded by Councillor Eady. Uh, any discussions, any questions uh, regarding this process, uh, Council? I don't see any, so uh, I'll call the question. All those in favor? And that carries. Thank you very much. Okay, moving, we've already dealt with item 6.4, uh, so we'll move to 6.5. This is uh, our June building uh, report. 
Uh, this is uh, just a motion to receive this report. Uh, so looking for a mover and seconder. Moved by Councillor uh, Brayton, seconded by Councillor Renault, that report B-06-22 be received. Any uh, discussion on this? All right, all those in favor? And that carries, thank you. And moving on to the next item, very similar except for uh, July instead of June. We're looking for a mover and seconder to receive this report. Moved by Councillor Smith, seconded by Councillor Linton, that report B-07-22 be received. Any discussion or comments around this report? I'll just uh, make the, the comment that um, in recent memory, that uh, that 28 uh, new housing starts seems to be a, a record in, in my mind. Um, the assessment value has already surpassed. We're only halfway through the reporting of, of this year, and we've already surpassed the total assessment of everything we built last year. And our, uh, our fees, our department fees, are just about where they were at the end of the year uh, last year. So great to have uh, some uh, uh, new assessment growth to help offset a little bit of the crazy inflation that uh, the world is experiencing now. So I'll go ahead and call the question on that. All those in favor? And that carries, thank you. Okay, moving on to um, our committee reports. We do have a couple of committee reports to receive this evening. Motion is that the following committee meeting minutes be received. Heritage Elizabethtown Kitley dated May 26, 2022, and Economic Development Committee dated August 9th, 2022. Looking for a mover and seconder to receive those. Moved by Councillor Smith and seconded by Councillor Eady. Any comments, questions, or concerns regarding either of those sets of minutes? Councillor Smith. The comment on the uh, heritage. Um, just an FYI that uh, the Elizabethtown County Heritage Committee hosted the Ontario Heritage Conference uh, in Brockville in June. We had over 200 attendees from across Ontario. Uh, there were 20 conference sessions and 60 presenters. Uh, I'd like to thank the Heritage Committee members for organizing this spectacular conference. Special thanks to our finance director, uh, Christine Mark and her staff for managing our finances. I'm proud to say that there was no cost, no cost to the taxpayers of Elizabethtown Kidney for hosting this conference, and that our municipality, Elizabethtown Kidney, received excellent media coverage. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Smith. Yeah, and I've uh, I've had a few people uh, compliment uh, the uh, the township and the committee on uh, how enjoyable and well run that conference was. So congratulations to all those involved. All right, any other uh, comments or discussions uh, discussion regarding either of these minutes? Okay, I'll call the question then. All those in favor? That's carried. Thank you. We'll move on to uh, bylaws. We have a number of uh, bylaws here for first and second reading. Uh, the motion is that the mover be granted leave to introduce bylaws number 22-55-57-59-60-61 and-62. And this shall constitute the first and second reading thereof. So I'm looking for a mover and seconder for that. Moved by Councillor Linton, seconded by Councillor Smith. And uh, we do have a third reading opportunity for several of these. So I'll just go ahead and call this. All those in favor? And that carries. Thank you. All right. We'll move on to our third reading. Uh, the uh, First of all, does uh, any member of council wish uh, any of these to be broken out to be voted on separately? Uh, Councillor Smith and then Councillor Brayton. Um, not necessarily broken out, but I just have a question in regards to one of them. Okay, fair enough. So we'll get into the discussion once we've got the motion on the on the floor. Uh, Council, Council Brayton, were you wanting to break one out, or was this for discussion? Uh, I like that. 2261 broken out. Okay, fair enough. Just making a note here. Okay, so I don't see any other requests for breaking out. So uh, this motion at this point then, you know, we'll deal with that one separately. This motion will read that uh, bylaws numbered 
55, 57, 59, 60, and 62 be given the third reading and finally passed, signed, sealed, and numbered accordingly. I'm looking for a mover and seconder for that. And then I see that we have some discussion. Councilor Renault uh, will move that and seconded by Councilor Lynn. Okay, so I do know, uh, so Councilor Smith, uh, you had a, a discussion point on one of these. Yeah, um, my question is in regards to um, bylaw number 22-61. But my question is... Um, ah, I hate to interrupt. That's the one that we have broken out. So we're going to vote right. on that one separately. Right. Um, so again, I'll ask you, I didn't realize that. I'll wait to, until we get the motion on the floor and then we'll deal with the discussion. Yeah. Uh, so is there any discussion on any of the bylaws other than Dash 61? Okay, so I'll call the question. We'll get those out of the way then. All those in favor? And that carries. All righty. So now we'll circle back and deal with bylaw uh, 22-61. So that motion will simply read that bylaw uh, number 2261 be given third reading and finally passed, signed, sealed, and numbered accordingly. So I'll need a mover and seconder and then we can begin our discussion. So I'll move by Councilor Renault, seconded by Councilor Smith. You're okay seconding that, Councilor Smith? Oh yeah, put it on the floor, okay. yeah. Okay, fair enough. So we've got the motion on the floor. Now I'll turn to you uh, for uh, for discussion. Thank you. Um, my only question, after watching the um, the uh, special meeting uh, by video, uh, due to my regrets about me at that meeting, my only question is, why is the agreement only extended from August 22nd, 2022 to October 31, 22? As I wasn't part of the discussion process at that meeting, I just wondered why that is the case. Uh, I'll turn it over to our administrator clerk to, to fill in any gaps that I may uh, have in the explanation that I'm about to provide. But at the end of the, uh, the discussion at the last meeting, there was direction given to staff on uh, the particulars of, of drafting up a, a more permanent bylaw, if I can put it that way. And there wasn't sufficient time to get that bylaw in place. Uh, well, I shouldn't say in place, to get that bylaw prepared for council's consideration before the current bylaw expired. And so that would have left uh, the, the ATV club without access to their trail for uh, uh, an interim period, if I can put it that way. So uh, with that brief explanation, I'll turn it over to our administrator clerk if there are additional details to be filled in. We will turn it over to our um, now clerk. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so Madam Clerk, what are your comments? Uh, so Mayor Burrow, you uh, are correct. It was the, the preference of council to extend the, the current agreement for a few months to allow council to have more time to have a more fulsome discussion about the future of the ATV trails as a whole. Okay, and so my recollection was that, that we did uh, we did provide some direction and so uh, have staff begun uh, drafting the ATV bylaw at this point? Uh, not at this point. We have uh, received confirmation from the township lawyer uh, just to ensure that there would not be uh, any issue that the township does find itself in a lame duck situation um, for us to, to continue with preparations. Okay, fair enough. All right. So I guess that was a slight misunderstanding on, on my part then. Uh, so back to you, uh, Councillor Smith, um, for further discussion or inquiry? I had an administrator had her hand up first. Oh, I'm sorry, can't, can't quite see that out of frame. Go ahead, uh, Madam Administrator. Um, it's kind of a two-part thing. Uh, the first one was extending the, the contract or the, the agreement for the uh, ATV club, but the other part of it, if I understand correctly, um, there may have been members of council that may have wanted to, uh, once the OPP information was received, may have wanted to have further discussion of whether uh, just to stay with the, the roads that we currently have allocated for ATV, whether to open it up to AB, ATVs entirely in the township. So by having the three months, uh, three months, two months, two months um, extension, it provides an opportunity for council to sit down and actually discuss whether they want to open it all up or just keep it to that trail or not at all. Okay, thank you. So back to you, Councillor Smith. Uh, that's a good segue. Um, 
because after watching the uh, the video, um, uh, uh, Sergeant uh, Noel uh, mentioned that Premier Ford has allowed ATVs on all municipal highways, um, and, and that that opens up uh, another discussion. Uh, I know that uh, I believe a councillor made it made a, a comment in that meeting that. You know, it'd be a lot easier if you had all your roadways open. It'd be a lot easier for the OPP to enforce the the laws of ATVs. Now, just remember, you know, you can you can restrict roadways, but that doesn't stop you from running ATVs on roadways. Uh, unless someone can clarify me, I've never seen a, a small municipality trump the province. But anyways, go ahead. I think the um, the province. Uh flipped their logic. So it's not that the province allows ATVs in a way that overrules us. It used to be that ATVs by default were not allowed unless the municipality passed a bylaw to allow them. And then the logic flipped. And a lot of people misinterpret what happened when the province flipped, you know, flipped, changed their legislation. But it flipped around so that the default was you could use ATVs on the shoulders of roadways unless the municipality passed a bylaw to restrict them. And our bylaw had been written in such a way that it was explicit, regardless of, of which way the logic uh, was by default, either by, by luck or by skill on the part of staff. Um, and I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Our bylaw is originally written when the logic was one way, applied equally as well after the, the province flipped their logic. So it's not that we're trumping. We have permission from the province to, to set the rules that we want. And so we just continued that way. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that just means that. But you understand, like when I when I listened to that video and listened to what they had to say, uh, my interpretation was that he opened up the robots. Okay. That's how I took it. He did. He did. Mr. Mayor? Yes. Uh, the province did enact legislation that said all roadways are now open for ATVs, with the exception of a municipality who has stated that the number of roadways are limited and this is the only roadways that are permitted. Okay. And that's what the municipality's bylaw did. It said only on these roadways, all others are no's. Okay. Like I said, just watching the video and listening to what he had to say. So. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Okay, any further discussion? Councillor Renault, and then Councillor Brayton. So if I remember correctly, we gave direction to staff that we would like to open up all of our roads because counties already have theirs not open except for certain sections. Uh, you can't go on a provincial highway either, but we were going to open up ours because they're already on every road in the township. So it makes it a whole lot easier. The OPP can just know, okay, they're they're allowed, but here's the rules if they're going to be on the road. It makes it a lot easier for them. And they don't seem to be having any problems in the surrounding neighborhoods around us, which I don't get, but they're not. So we're having problems and we only have a couple of roads open. So I'm, I'm confused on that issue, but <clears throat> maybe if we open them all up, we won't have any more problems. Yeah, and the other direction that we did uh, provide, and this is probably why staff have, have uh, held off actually doing any work on the bylaw, was we didn't want to, as just a, a group of four uh, council, mem council members, uh, set the direction for the policy. We wanted to ensure that all the council uh, was available to vote on it uh, because it is such a such a high interest topic. Um, so, so now, of course, we've got a, <clears throat> the other members of council here, and so we're at least having part of that discussion now. Uh, so I think, uh, Councillor Brayton, you are next. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, part of my questions have been answered. I wondered why why we would uh, write a bylaw for three months or two months. I thought first maybe it was a, a tight mayor, but I guess it has some some reasons why, I don't know why, I don't know whether everybody re, re, remembers or thinks that there's an election that's called or whether that has anything to do with it or not. 
and whether they're scared to uh, say what they mean or not. Uh, I haven't changed my mind. I I didn't go to the uh, the meeting. I said I wouldn't be there when the OPP were there, and I didn't look at the uh, look at the uh, video. But when the OPP were there, uh, I haven't changed my mind. Uh, open up the whole the whole uh, township seems like pretty stupid on my statement. Uh, but I'm only one vote and I will vote uh, according to the, the people that are in this township. Uh, I'll say it again that the, 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 this uh, open house we had, they were from Angleside, uh, Club in Ingleside, a club in Johnstown, a club in Smith Falls. And I'll say again, I really don't care with them people of another township. The, the township, the people, the taxpayers in this township are the people that put me in here. And I say again, that are the people that, that I'll vote for. And here in the, the uh, here in the comments out of that open house, there was enough people there to convince me to keep on fighting. Not that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Renault. Uh, thank you, Councillor Brayton. I get where you're coming from. And, and I'm pretty sure that way back when, when the snowmobilers started, this was the same issue. People didn't want them. And they were there anyway. And then the clubs were there. So the clubs and now the clubs are excellent and, and are policing their snowmobile trails. And it's not an issue for the farmers, it's not an issue for the roads, it's not an issue. And I feel that that's what's going to happen if we have the clubs, <coughs> sorry, if we have the clubs behind us on this. They're already on the roads. There's not a day that goes by that there is not at least one, if not more, on my road, which is not designated, but there's always four wheelers on it. If we say no on any of the roads, they're gonna be there anyway, and we're not going to have the clubs to police them. We're not going to have, have that help on the trails as well, because they do police their trails. I think that we need to give them that opportunity to prove themselves like they did with the snowmobilers. These groups are now working together, which is also beneficial for us. So I, I do think that we're further ahead to have the backing of the clubs than to not have it because they're going to be on the road anyway. And I know Mr. Brayton, they will not be on yours because it is a county road, but they are on our other roads and they're not going to stop. And our OPP cannot be everywhere and they're not going to be everywhere. Uh, Councilor Brayton. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councilor Renault, I'll have you. Uh, I, I would like to tell you that I live in a county road and I have pretty much every day, two or three times a day, uh, ATV going up or down. Uh, you're, you're comparing apples to oranges when it comes to a skidoo uh, and, a, and an ATV. Uh, skidoo, they go across the, the snow, the farmer's fields, but they have permission to go. They, they, uh, they look after what they're doing. And then they're not going to end up, they're on snow. They're not going to go every mud puddle that they can find. I'm just saying that I... I uh, didn't, I didn't uh, like the idea of the start with, excuse me, and I not, I'm, I'm not changing my mind just because uh, I can. Uh, I'll just leave it at that. I, I want no part of it. Uh, and I told you enough times, and that's the way I'm going to stick to it. And thank you very much. 
Thank you, Councillor Brayton. Any other uh, discussion? Uh, Councillor Smith. Thanks for all the information uh, tonight. Um, I know that uh, we're just extending the agreement that we already had in place to October 31st, and that uh, I would say that probably a, a more concrete bylaw, I would say, is coming forth uh, between now and then. Is that, that my impression from the discussion? Yeah, that was the intent of the of the discussion that took place with the with the four council members, and now we've had a chance to, you know, include everybody in an extension of that discussion. Um, at this point, I have to say, you know, notwithstanding uh, the the members that, that feel differently, and and that's fine. Um, I think the consensus is still to at least consider something moving forward. So yes, that would be my expectation. Okay. Thank you very much. I'll just make a. a two brief comments of, of my own, um, not to, to try and convince or change anybody's mind uh, by any means. I guess I tend to uh, to think along similar lines to, to Council Renault. I'm still willing to give this a chance, even though if, if somebody said I only have five, at the beginning of this discussion two years ago, somebody said you only have five seconds to make a decision, how do you feel about ATVs? I would have said, can't stand them because of the experience that I've had with the, uh, with the pipeline easement next to my own property. Um, but I think I didn't think it was fair to tar every, everybody with that same brush. Um, and the point is well taken that the, that the majority of the people who attended the open house, you know, there was a lot of out of town representation. I, I acknowledge that and, and agree that those were the circumstances. It's not the out of town people that I'm allowing to continue to influence my decision making. It's it's my own observations as I drive around our own roads and I see our own people on on their ATVs using the roads, even though it's illegal. You know, that clearly indicates that they want to be able to use ATVs on the road because they don't even care. It's illegal. They're doing it anyway. Um, so that's where I'm, I'm basing, you know, the fairly broad support for ATV usage on the roads. Um, the one thing that I've had a chance to think about since our uh, initial discussion when the OPP representatives were here, um, I know, Councillor Renault, you had suggested since most, if not all of our hamlets have a county road through them and will be restricted that way anyway, um, it seemed to make sense at the time, but but after I slept on it uh, a little bit, then I started to think about uh, a hamlet such as Lynn. You know, yes, there are a couple of major county roads that run through it, but if we just allow that to be the restriction, then then I could see where ATVs would zip around the actual, you know, uh, block roads, if I can say that. Uh, you know, so the county roads really wouldn't do that hamlet restriction for us. So I'm thinking... A, a, a better approach in terms of crawl, walk, run would be to consider restricting it to say not in the hamlets and make the exception where it makes sense. So for instance, in Jasper and in Toledo, there's the gas station. So we can designate a route to get to the service to help those businesses and to help provide the service to the ATVers. That makes sense. But I couldn't think of any other places where an exception for ATVs made as much sense as that. But it does seem that we might find more troubles if we just open it all up, including our own roads in, in the hamlets. So I'll toss that out for council's consideration that we maybe consider saying not in the hamlets with the exception of Jasper and Toledo with a designated route to get to the service stations. How does everybody feel about that? Okay, okay. Madam Clerk, go ahead. Just as a thought on, on um, Toledo, there is no lower tier road that leads to the gas station in Toledo. They're both county roads. Uh, right, but to get even into the into the hamlet, so let's say that the ATV club approached the counties and said, look, we want this segment of County Road 8 or 1 or whichever way they want to approach it. Um, how would people even get to that segment of the county road to get to the gas station? So, um, so that's what I'm thinking. If we designate a route, whatever we have to do to designate, even if it's only a small portion of one of our roads to be able to, to get there. And and maybe, well, I guess in the, in the case of Toledo, I guess you're right. There isn't a, a township road within the Hamlet boundary, is there? No. Okay. So that would be strictly a county issue, but but there may be one on Jasper. I think there's a there's a side road on Jasper that would provide access. That's That's correct. Yeah. Yes, there is. Yeah, there's the McEwen. Yeah. 
Uh, Councilor Renault, do I see your hand up there? You're right. Line three takes you right into the village yep. and Lake Aloida Road takes you to County Road 8, which takes you to the gas station. So that's why I suggested at our last meeting that we get that one section of eight to give Toledo that business. Uh, they're going to do it anyway. Yeah. And so how do you feel since you were the one who had suggested allowing the county roads to be the restrictor for the hamlets? Um, how would you feel about saying not in the hamlets with these exceptions that we just discussed for the service stations? Uh, I, I don't know, because what if you're living in the village of Lynn or Tin Cap and you have a four wheeler? Now I've got to drive to the outside of the township with my thing or the outside of the hamlet with my ATV on the trailer, park it outside and then go with my ATV for to get to the trails. I, I don't know how that would work, and maybe it's something that we try. We, we restrict it and see what happens. Yeah, what I'm getting at is, is uh, you know, whichever way do we decide, if it's a good idea, fine. If we don't, that's fine, too. But I'm trying to give staff some, some clear direction so that as they begin preparing this bylaw for our consideration, you know, they have some pretty clear uh, directives to, uh, to work on. Uh, Councillor Smith, I think I saw your hand going up. I was just going to say, I didn't want to open up a can of worms, uh, uh, but, you know, I didn't know we're having a full discussion about what we're going to do with the next bylaw, that's all. So I was just wondering if you're just wanting to get back to this, this bylaw to pass it or not. Well, I think the discussion is relevant, and, and I think this discussion had to take place at some point, and we only have this two-month extension if we pass this. Um, so, you know, it's as good a time as any, the, the agenda is fairly light, gets, have the discussion, give staff their direction and, and, you know, make something productive of all of this. Uh, so further comment, uh, Councillor Smith? Uh, Madam Clerk's got her hand up. Oh, uh, Madam Clerk, uh, sorry, yeah. or Madam Administrator or Clerk? Uh, administrator. Okay, Madam Administrator. Um, I would suggest, uh, my suggestion to Council would be to allow the clerk and I to uh, go away until the next meeting of council and potentially provide you with a draft of potential mapping and so on to address these issues. And then we can go from there. Because that still provides us, we have another meeting in September, need be, there's two meetings. Then we, we're beating the uh, October 31st deadline or 30th deadline. Yeah, so it certainly suits me. Uh, Council, you okay with that? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for a, a productive discussion uh, once again. Uh, so we're at the point now where I'm going to call a question on the third reading of this bylaw, which is just the extension of the existing circumstances. Uh, so all those in favor? And that carries. Thank you. Okay. And so next on our agenda... We have uh, correspondence items and uh, council members were provided with um, a, a very recent update on, uh, on one of these uh, communications with regards to uh, the Green Bank, Green Bank Cemetery uh, Management Board request. So I'll go ahead and we'll deal with the motion then we'll come back and, and deal with uh, these correspondence items. So the motion as it stands right now reads as follows, that the following correspondence items be received and responded to, item one and three, and that the following items be received and filed, item two, and that the following items be received and referred to staff, items four and five, and that the following item be received and supported, item six. So I'm looking for a mover and seconder for that, and we can begin our discussion. Moved by Councillor Linton, seconded by Councillor Renault. Okay, so um, regarding item number one, uh, any discussion? Uh, uh, Madam Administrator, uh, did you have anything uh, further on this? Um, this was uh, this was an item that was uh, brought to council beginning of June, end of May, and uh, it deals with um, a property address that uh, well. The properties were addressed, I believe, in the original addressing system, and there was, uh, to put it very nice and politely, there was little or no concern regarding uh, consistency between two municipalities, which we find on all of our border roads right now. In this particular case, uh, it was number 600 and 602 that form a slight issue for us. Um, logically, 602 is in the right space with 
559 on the other side of the road being very near to it. So it's, it makes a logical choice to, to keep the 602, but there's two lots between 602 and 600 uh, that need to be numbered. There's a building permit being issued on one of them. So uh, council authorized uh, staff to approach 600 to advise him that it would have to be changed. And we were, the township was contributing $200 for the cost incurred for any address change and the gentleman is opposing it, uh, wishing uh, that uh, the other number 602 be changed, which would throw out the number in sequence on the other side again. So I, I just, I need to know where council would like to proceed on this. Okay, uh, so with that then, any uh, discussion, uh, suggestions, uh, council? Uh, Councillor Smith? So uh, when I read this um, correspondence, um, to me, this is a, a numbering system for our 911 program. And um, I think we need to take the advice of our, of our staff on what is logic. Uh, I know perhaps the owner may not agree um, with it, but yes, understand the, the reasoning why it has to be broken up to an A and a B and, and so on. Um, and did our fire chief get be involved in this process? He's all supportive of it. Um, so I, that's how I that's how I read it. That's how I look at it. I agree with our staff. Okay, thank you. Any other uh, discussion at this point? I guess my question is. Um, so council, uh, assuming that the motion passes, will be directing that this be received and responded to. Um, and so uh, I guess to be uh, quite frank about it, I would feel a little bit more comfortable under, under these circumstances because I have to say if I, were, if I were the homeowner and I was looking at two new vacant lots and it's a lot easier to establish an address than it is to go through and change subscriptions and all kinds of things. Um, so I sort of, you know, I might not, uh, I might not communicate the same way this particular resident did, but uh, I, I'm sympathetic to his position, and I agree with you, Councillor Smith, that that uh, from an I'm on a numbering system uh, standpoint, this may make the most sense. But I'm very curious as to what the nature of our response is going to be, um, because I don't want to pre-approve a response until I know what that response is going to be. So, can we get a little bit of clarification around that? Uh, depending on what council says, if council um, provides instruction to staff to continue with the renumbering, that is what he will be advised that we will continue with the renumbering and and uh, we will provide him with the uh, monetary uh, payment uh, to offset some of the costs. Uh, the township would then provide the uh, state, the post and the or the new number blade in order to have it installed at that property. And I know that our fire chief was involved in, in the recommendation, or at least in the discussions leading to the recommendation that came forward the first time. Um, before we, we respond, is there any value in having uh, the fire chief weigh in on the implications of uh, what Mr. McCallum has suggested or some alternative to the ideal solution that we had originally sought? The fire chief, uh, we've had a number of discussions actually on various addresses, especially when we're talking about second dwelling units. And one of the things that we have done in the past where there was two residential units on a single property, we have used the delegate de designation of A and B, but they were on a single property, not two separate independent standing properties just to differentiate between the two two units. And in actual fact, we just had that discussion on a second dwelling that um, is being constructed. So, but the, the number at the road is still going to be 552, but when they're going up, there'll be a sign A and a sign B. Okay, uh, Councilor Reno, I see your hand there. Is there a 603? 603 would, would have been on the opposite side of the road in the township of Athens side. All odd numbers are on the opposite side. Well, 601 is an odd number as far as I can consider. 
that that makes sense to me. 601 is an odd number. So why would it not be 601 and 603? And the guy that's 602 is is a happy camper. Um, He's number number 600 and he suggested 601A and 601B on his side of the road. But how come it says in this letter, if planning people make, make a mistake by assigning 602 to the log house? I don't even see 600 in this uh, letter. No, his number was supposed to be 600. That's what we were, the, the staff were suggesting the 600 be changed to a proper number. He's currently 600. Okay, well, still 601 is an odd number. And it shouldn't be on that side of the street. So then is there a 603? If it would, it would be on the Athens side of the road. Why? Yeah, so I guess the real question is, I is there a 604? Okay, wait, just... Uh, <laughs> when you number a road, one side is even, the other side is odd. You don't, right. you don't mix even and odds on one side. One and three are odd. Yes. He's on so the they're on the same side. side of the road. Why He's is there on not... The even. He's on the even side. Yeah, his so his, his suggestion was a little misguided. He, I, I'm yeah. not sure that he understood e- even an odd. I'm reading his thing. The solution to the problem is that you've assigned 601 B and 601A to these lots. No, that's his, his that's suggested his solution. solution. So what number are you giving these lots? Just A and B? 602 is an established number. Fine. That's the guy in the law house. Okay. 600 is this gentleman's house. And there's two lots in between them. So there's no, not enough, there's no room for an even number between 602 and 600. Yeah, so really his suggestion should have been, rather than to confuse even and odd, it should have been something along the lines of the two lots should be 600B and 600C or something like that. Like the 601 is what's throwing us off, but that was his suggestion, certainly not ours. Uh, Councilor Eady. I just want to seek a little bit of clarification. Is this going to cost him anything? Uh, there would be a cost, I believe, associated with changing your driver's license and OHIP. Um, mailing address changes. Um, potentially bills. I'm not sure whether they charge for address changes. So if he gets his telephone bill to that address. And... Okay, so... <laughs> That changes a little bit then too, because if it's it was our issue and we're making him change his number, then I think we should be paying all the costs for him to change his number, in my opinion. If it was something we're making him do. Like we're pretty much forcing him into it, then we should be paying all the costs to change the number. The township has offered him two hundred dollars towards changing of that like cover Um like, I'm just saying, I don't think it's fair that he should be punished, especially monetarily for something that we're doing. You know what I mean? Oh, I, I understand your point. Any other uh, discussion around this? I, I can see where the, the out-of-pocket expense is probably going to exceed $200 for the, for the various uh, fees. And beyond that, certainly doesn't recognize the the inconvenience and and a value of, of somebody's time. Uh, so I'm I'm going to be honest. You know, I, I would not be happy if if I suddenly got a letter that said I had to do this. But if uh, if this is really the only solution to be had, well, then I guess we'll have an irate resident, and it'll be a story that uh, is told for a few generations. And, but, but I do think that we should at least cover whatever the legitimate costs are. I'm, I'm with Councillor Eady on that one. How does Council feel about at least that? Councillor Eady? I also think just honestly stressing the importance of the safety aspect to it. Because when first responders are going there and the numbers are in order, they're not going to find it. Something goes wrong with this house. And that's a huge concern, too. 
So I really think the numbers do need to be changed. I just don't feel that you should have to pay for it. It's already going to be inconvenient enough to go around and change all that stuff. So is that the direction that we're going to give to, to staff? Is council uh, comfortable with that? Um, would it be reimbursement? Uh, can I suggest that we initially... Um, yep. Uh, I've got so you there, Councilor, and I'll get you in a second. Um, that we initially provide him with $200 and then ask him to submit any further uh, invoices that he has had to pay for it. Um, and I've also been updated by um, <coughs> the clerk, clerk that the driver's, thank you, the driver's license, uh, there's no fee for a change of address and there's no fee for the health card or there's no address on the health card, which is sort of a fair situation. 200 plus. 200 plus, what, what is it? Somebody, somebody said the word. Provides, provides through. Legitimate, yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 and that's fine. I mean, reasonable. Hey, hey Councillor Renault, you had your hand up just before we finalize that direction. I, I just want to make sure we are the ones responsible to change the nine one one plate. Yes. Yeah. I would. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so I think we've dealt with that one and, and provided direction to uh, to staff. So we'll move on to uh, item two. Uh, any comments or uh, discussion around item two? I think it's pretty straightforward. All righty, we'll move on to uh, item three. So this is uh, the one where we were, uh, okay, whose hand is that? I see a hand up, but I don't know who you are. Uh, Madam Clerk? Yes, you're correct. Okay. Um, staff are, uh, would like to uh, amend the the direction instead of receive and respond to receive and refer to staff. Okay, uh, so mover and seconder, are you comfortable with that? Uh, Councillor Smith? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think that's that's good given the, the late breaking information uh, that is favorable anyway. I think that's a, a good thing to do. Uh, okay, so moving on then to item four, any discussion around, oh, sorry, Councillor Smith? So refer to, refer to staff. Are we going to get a response back or what you're referring them back to? Or? I expect that there's going to be a report developed. Am I right, uh, Madam Clerk? Uh, you are correct, yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, so item four, any discussion around that? Ready? Uh, item five, uh, discussion around that. Okay, seeing none. Item six. If nobody has any questions around item six, um, I think this is probably aimed, I'm not sure whether this is more appropriate for Madam Clerk or Madam Administrator. Uh, so I read through this and, and normally when we're asked to support something, there's a clear resolution or what have you. It's not that I, I uh, am not interested in any of these discussion items, I am. Uh, and I think the discussions are pertinent, but I guess I was left wanting for a clear understanding of exactly what we're supporting all five of, of these things. We don't even have answers back regarding some of these questions. So a little bit of clarity before council lends its support to something. I think we need to know what exactly are we supporting. Uh, so Madam Administrator. It's the creation of the um, position recruitment uh, tri-council. The tri-council has stated they wanna get a steering committee together for position recruitment efforts and meeting with um, with discussions with all of councils. And I think that that what they're looking for is is uh, for the council to say, yes, we're interested in those discussions. Okay. Okay, fair enough. And so that was that was one of the biggest questions that I had in reading this is, okay, that's great that the tri-county or tri-county, tri tri-council uh, body got together and discussed this. But where does that leave us? If we support them going ahead with a physician recruitment effort, are we just going to support them doing whatever it takes to get a physician into their area? Or is this going to be a wider net? You know, again, don't get me wrong. I think we all need to be behind this, but I just want to make sure that, you know, if they're taking the lead, great. So long as it still is a regional effort. I'm assuming they are looking for a regional effort. Okay. All right. 
Uh, Councilor Renault. Well, I, I do realize that we need more doctors, nurses, and everything else in the community. We need them in the entire province. We need them in the entire country. So this recruitment team, all it's going to do is steal from Peter to pay Paul. There, there's, this is, I feel really bad that we are gonna go out and recruit from another community who will lose their doctor or their nurses or whatever. Are we going to go to another country and start doing this? Uh, way to go, uh, Mr. Clark, for suggesting or for supporting. But when is your government going to give us or going to support getting more nurses and doctors in the province? We've got foreigners in the country that could be doing these jobs, but they won't allow them. They won't certify them. They're not training anymore. They're not making it advantageous for kids to go into nursing or even into being a doctor because they get a part-time job if they're a nurse, maybe. And they're treated crappily. Doctors aren't paid properly. Like, I'm sorry, you're gonna get recruitment and you're gonna steal them from somebody else. That's the only way this recruitment works is you're gonna take them either from another province, which is don't have enough anyway, or you're gonna take them from the next county over. So as much as we need them, are we being fair to our neighbors? That's all I'm asking. Uh, it, it's a good point. I'm going to go ahead and, and give you a little bit of, a, of an answer or a little bit of a, of a perspective, uh, Councillor Renault. I agree with you 100%. The problem is there are other uh, municipal areas, other regions that are already engaged in these efforts. And so it, it basically boils down to uh, compensating for a potential loss of somebody that, that gets poached from our area to move somewhere else that has a recruitment effort underway. So, so in order to protect our local residents, we almost have to step up and do this. You know, it, it's kind of like everybody has, has to stage their home if they want a decent sale price now, because everybody, you know, a lot of people started to do it. And now if you don't do it, you're just not in the game. And it's really, that's what it, uh, it's boiled down to. So just to the east of us, um, South Dundas, has a they're they're way ahead of us. They're a year out of the gate already in in this effort. So we would have some catching up to do in this region. So I agree with you. It's a bigger problem that needs uh, solving. But I would hate to have egg on my face. You know, a year or two from now, if we're the only ones that didn't do this and we lose to two or three doctors and don't have any coming in to replace them, shame on us. But but you know, having said that, I agree with you. But I just I don't think we have much choice. It's that's the game we're in, and we've got to step up and swing the same size bat. Yeah, I know we don't have a choice. It's just a poor choice, but it's not it's not right and no one should be doing it. Yep, I agree. Uh, so any other discussion on, on this item? Okay, seeing none, I guess we're ready to call a question on the correspondence then. All those in favor uh, with that adjustment that we noted uh, the Green Bank item being referred to staff. All those in favor? And that's carried, thank you. All right, so uh, moving on with our agenda, we are at uh, motions and notices of motion. Oh, Councilor Brayton, sorry, information items. Uh, sorry, Councilor Brayton, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, 6.5, the train horns. We had a letter on that. What are you going to do oh. with that? Oh, did I miss that? I'm sorry. I'm trying to manage too many windows on my screen here. Uh, yes, so uh, I did ask if there were if there was discussion on that, I believe that that's a refer to staff. So I expect that we'll have a report come back on that as well, and then we can actually get into discussion at that time. Am I right on that, Madam Clerk? Uh, it may not necessarily have a full report. Uh, staff will investigate what the process is. Um, depending, it could be quite intensive, uh, but essentially the first step is to contact the um, basically the railway companies and see if they're willing to just access that record or accept what the um, sender was proposing. Okay, hey, Councillor Braden. I would recommend that you don't spend too much time on it. 
yeah, I don't, I don't think it has to be intensive. I think, uh, I think that approach is good. If it, if they'll just accept what we have, great. Uh, otherwise, if it's a, if it's a 25 step program and they already have uh, an FAQ document on what we'd have to go through, then there's the sum total of the report. <laughs> okay, uh, Councillor Eady. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure we had this question last time. So that might help too. Okay, uh, so we're finished with correspondence. I'm safe to move on to information items at this point. Okay, yes, so uh, under information items, we do have the notice regarding our um, uh, public meeting that's coming up on August 17th uh, with, regard, with regards to our Lynn Valley Road uh, bridge options. And uh, the other information item that we have here is uh, with regards to the library book sale and car show. Uh, coming up this Saturday. Uh, does any other member of council have an information item? Councillor Renault, I see your hand up. Yes, I just want to make my apologies that I won't be at the, the Lynn Valley Bridge thing because I'm still not testing uh, negative, not testing positive. I'm still not testing negative. So I won't be there. I don't want to give it to anybody else. We all appreciate that. Thank you. I'm glad to see that your recovery is coming along. Uh, any other uh, information items at this point? Okay, seeing none, uh, we'll move on to motions and notices of motion. Uh, Councillor Renault, you did have a, a notice of motion uh, that you provided at the last meeting. And I see now that the motion reads, the Township of Elizabeth Town Kitley recognized the importance of the environment and the role the municipality can play in its preservation. And the Township takes a proactive role in adopting green energy infrastructure, and the council direct staff to investigate the feasibility of installing electric vehicle charging stations, including costs, grant opportunities, and user fees at its municipal offices, library branches, and fire stations. So I'm taking uh, that you have moved that and that you will be seeking a seconder and I'll uh, allow you to speak first on the motion. And I have some information for you on your motion when you uh, finish speaking to it from the AMO conference as of today. So looking for a seconder at this point. Councillor Eady. Okay, so the motion's on the floor and Councillor Renault, I'll give you your opportunity to speak to it. Yes, I am noticing that other municipalities in the, in the counties have this. And if this is the way we're going, and it looks like we are, because a lot of the car dealers are saying now that by 2030, that's all they're gonna be making is electric. So we should be ahead of the curve. We should have things in place. Oh, with the how difficult it is to get an electrician right now, we may, be two years in getting one to put one in. But there are grants to do this. And I'm thinking that Rideau Lakes got grants to put all the ones in that they put in. Um, so I'm thinking we should, be, we should be looking at this. We should be trying to get grants for it. I have no idea how much it costs, but we should be doing it, especially if our employees get electric cars. Where are they gonna plug in while they're at work all day if they needed to? All right, so the little bit of insight that I'll uh, provide is that the, um, uh, the United Counties of Leeds Granville had a, de a delegation uh, with the appropriate uh, ministry today. Uh, the province has announced a, a $91 million fund uh, to do exactly this type of thing, to put in uh, charging stations throughout the, the province. Um, the specifics of that program are not known yet because the budget has to pass first. Once that happens, then they are going to enter into consultations uh, and that will include dealing with some of the concerns that, that we raised. And that was the capacity of the electricity uh, system, uh, making sure that these things were, uh, were installed in prudent locations. So the example that came up during the discussion was initially uh, charging stations were installed at the various GO stations in, in the GTA. And the lesson that was learned there was somebody would commute, go and plug in their car, hop on the GO train and go to work for the day. And so that tied up the charging station with that one car all day. There was no turnover. There was no good use of the, of the resources. Um, so, so there were charging stations that were uh, put in at the uh, en route stations all along the 401. Um, those seem to be uh, generating uh, much better use. And that was a, a private uh, company 
So all the all the taxpayers did through the provincial government is provide the location, but the actual cost was borne by a, a private company to install those charging stations. Uh, based on our discussion today, the only the only public one, and I, I mean municipally owned uh, charging station in the county is in Leeds and Thousand Islands at their library. Again, with the idea, and it was installed five or six years ago, with the idea that you're not spending the whole day at the library. So while you're there for the hour or so, you can charge up your car and then it becomes available for, for somebody else. So certainly the province wants to take a look at a, at a regional approach to make sure that we don't end up with charging stations all bunched up in one spot. And then, you know, a whole, a long distance that's gonna give people range anxiety, uh, you know, before you can hit the next one. So I think the timing of your motion is, is great. It was really interesting that I got all that feedback today from the, from the delegation meeting. And it looks like there is gonna be some money available and you know, this will be an interesting path forward for sure. Uh, any other comments or discussions around the, the motion council? Council, uh, Councillor Brayton. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, it, it's good to get a grant but it's, it's, it's still our money. The government don't have as much money of their own. It's some, some uh, they collect the money, but it, it's taxpayers' money that the province handles too. And I would ask this council, how much, how many gallons of gas the fire department and the world's department and the libraries have sold here over the last 10 years? And I don't think there will be a gallon. And, uh, uh, and Cars, electric cars at sixty thousand dollars a piece. I don't, I don't see myself buying one, and I don't see a lot of other people buying them. So, and they can be green. You can talk about this and be all you like, but uh, uh, you're going to have to prove to me that it's going to fly like everybody seems to think it's going. Thank you. Thank you. Any other uh, discussion, Councillor Reedy? Oh, sorry, go ahead, follow up, uh, Councillor Brayton, then I'll go to Councillor Eady. I might add that uh, I'll, I'll wait for a minute, but uh, Councillor Eady, go ahead. Okay, uh, go ahead, Councillor Eady, and I see you after that, uh, Councillor Renault. I'll get around to you as well. Go ahead, Councillor Eady. Yeah, I was just going to say, like, electrical vehicles, they're, like, how I see it, they're not the end-all, be-all yet. I don't think we have the capacity to have everyone drive electric cars. And I don't think we will in the next 10 years either. But what I do think is that people are already buying them. They're already using them. And I think it's a good idea to have it accessible to people, especially since we are such a large municipality. It does take a while to get from one center to the other. And we are sometimes that middle zone. It would be good for people with electric cars just not to end up on the side of the road. They have somewhere to charge. And I think this is a great opportunity to do it now when the grants are accessible instead of waiting until it's too late and then we're paying for them ourselves. Because they're going to be around. I don't think everybody's going to be driving them. That's just my opinion. But they will be around and there will be more of them as the coming years. Okay, thank you. You ready for your follow-up, uh, Councillor Brayton, or should I go with uh, right. Councillor Renault? Okay, uh, Councillor Renault, go ahead. We'd be able to charge for the charging. Uh, from the ratepayers, but we should also have it there for our staff. I mean, we shouldn't charge our staff to uh, charge up their cars, but we can't say that next year, three or four staff won't have an electric car the year after that. So we, it, Councillor Eady's right, we should do it while there is grant money, but it's it's not just for the ratepayers, which is a nice thing for the ratepayers, but it's also for our staff. And even us, if we come to a council meeting and see that, oops, we're a little low, we might need a juice to get home. Uh, you never know. Uh, Councillor Lynn. I'm not sure I would be completely convinced with that exception for staff to not pay for the electricity. Simply the fact that others that couldn't afford electric car still have to pay for gas to get back and forth to work. So that would be just my opinion on that. Councillor Brayton. Yeah, I, I just want to say that I don't think the municipality is in the in the uh, business of investing taxpayer money to uh, to uh, fuel somebody's car. 
rather whether it be gasoline, diesel, or electric. Like it, it, it's not the, the, it shouldn't be the township mandate to spend money, the taxpayer's money on that kind of stuff. Thank you. Okay, any other comments? Just a couple of, uh, sorry, go ahead then, uh, Councillor Renault. We'd be making that money back. It's not a pocket. We would make it back. I don't think the township's in the business of making money like that. I just don't. Thank you. All righty. So just a, a couple of quick comments from uh, my own perspective. Um, the, the electric vehicles, I think, are ultimately going to be uh, the way of the, the future. But uh, right now, I think uh, they are going the same route as the, um, the solar farms and the photovoltaic cells. Uh, when when those things were introduced as the as the savior for a renewable energy, the missing piece of the conversation was what happens with those. How are we going to deal with the materials when when the solar farms are are done in in the current panels, and those panels either have to be replaced, or if the business case is not making somebody enough money, those panels are just uh, taken away and it's turned back into a farmer's field or what have you. Nobody really talked about the recycling end game and where the costs are, are going to uh, come from to deal with that uh, and and the carbon footprint that is going to be taken up to you know uh, take those panels apart break them down into their component parts and so on there still is a bit of a vacuum uh, in in that whole conversation in that particular area it's the same thing with the massive battery systems in the electric fields vehicles right now yes there are some recycling processes that are that are coming online but nobody's calculating the, the carbon uh, footprint that it takes to do that recycling. Um, so it's it's an interesting conversation uh, as far as, as that's concerned. But I don't think there's any question that the electric vehicles are coming because, you know, all the, the uh, emissions regulations uh, that are being imposed on the manufacturers are such that whether it's 2030 or it's 2035 or by the time it actually happens, it's 2040. I think that train has left the station. We're only going to argue over how long is the track. But, but that's the way it's it's going to go. Um, and and I don't think that we should be giving this electricity away for free by, by any stretch of the imagination. I think to provide the, um, the service, if I can put it that way, the actual station, um, that that basically means that that we're responding to a trend that is already well established. Uh, but I don't think that we should be providing, uh, employees with essentially free gas in the form of electricity uh, or our residents with, with the free electricity. The one real concern I have is when we think about our roads program, think about the big number that we get off gas tax. So when 2030 or 2035 or 2040 comes, what are we going to have? Some kind of electric vehicle electricity tax? What is going to replace you know, where we get that funding from? Because the cars still wear out the roads regardless of what the fuel is. Uh, and I haven't heard anybody having that conversation yet either. So there's still a lot of things to be worked out, but I don't think there's any question that, that a good portion of the world is headed to electric vehicles. So I, I don't have a problem with the fact that it would basically be a no cost in the end uh, to our taxpayers. So I'm, I'm prepared to, to support it. Any further discussion before I go ahead and call the question? Okay, uh, all those in favor? And opposed to it, well, that's everybody, so that carries. Okay, thank you very much. Any notices of motion now, uh, members of council? Okay, I don't see any, uh, so we'll move to public question period. Madam Clerk, were, did we receive any uh, questions from the public? There were no questions from the public. Okay, uh, we do have a, uh, a closed meeting scheduled for this evening. Uh, so I'll uh, get that motion here. So the motion reads that so the regular council meeting adjourn at 8.30 p.m. for a closed meeting of council regarding one matter under both Municipal Act Section 239, subsection B and subsection D. Uh, personal matters about an identifiable individual, including municipal employees and labor relations or employee negotiations, uh, specifically regarding personnel. I'm looking for a mover and seconder for that. Moved by Councillor Eady, seconded by Councillor Renault. All those in favor? Thank you. The motion's in carried, uh, is uh, carried just before we end the live session. Uh, we won't be coming back. I don't believe, well, Madam Clerk, are we going to go into a breakout room and come back uh, live or are we going to report out and that will be reflected in the minutes? Oh, 
we are going to attempt a breakout room. Okay. All right. Fair enough. So for anybody who's watching the stream, uh, bear with us. Uh, we will be back and we'll report out uh, when the, the meeting is finished. I don't anticipate that we're going to be too, too long with this. Yes, Councillor Smith. What was that dollar amount that you just mentioned that the government's going to throw out there? So green energy, I think it was ninety-one million with an M, not billion with a B. Thank you.
Good. I can hear the chambers again, and I'm unmuted now, so we're good. Uh, okay, uh, so we are live again. Yes, yes. Sir. Okay, very good. Uh, so council uh, did meet in closed session uh, to discuss the uh, item as listed on the agenda. Uh, and as a result of that discussion, uh, did give direction to staff. So with that, uh, the one remaining item is to deal with adjournment of our regular council session. I'm looking for a mover that the regular meeting of council adjourn at 9.07 p.m. to meet again on Monday, September 12, 2022 at 7 p.m. Uh, I see Councillor Brayton. All those in favor? <laughs> Great. Thank you very much, everybody. That concludes our business for this evening. Right. <laughs> Safe travels, everybody. Yeah. You Thanks. Yeah.